Starship Troopers Extermination is a real treat of a game. When this first dropped on Steam, I was so delighted to be playing a full featured recreation of the Starship Troopers movie, Base Defense. I had an absolute blast with the game, but it was missing one thing from the movie, a tactical nuke. That is, until their new Hive of Valaka DLC dropped. This update has a brand new 4 player tactical mode set in a massive bug hive. Two new weapons, a bunch of new perks, a total overhaul of the XP system, quality of life improvements, and of course bugs and massive explosions. Do you want to know more? Now, Starship Troopers Extermination has received almost universally positive reviews since its launch, but the content that shipped with the early access game was pretty easy to grind through. The devs have released some small updates that include new features and maps, but Hives of Valaka introduces a whole new level of challenge. It's the game's first underground map and the first to put you on the offensive. Now, based on the name of the game, you might think that the goal is to actually exterminate the bugs. However, most of the base game missions have you pretty much defending and scrounging up resources to survive until an exfiltration. However, with Valaka, we're taking the fight to the bugs in their caves, just like in the movie. The goal of this mode is to plant nukes in the arachnid hive cores and get out before they overwhelm you. And to say that this mode nailed it would be an understatement. While it might sound fairly straightforward, in practice, hive mode is easily extermination's most scary and punishing yet. You like that? You like that? You like that? This is where we die, boys! In the typical advanced and secure or arc mode, success is almost always guaranteed even on the veteran difficulty now. 16 players with a full complement of base building options versus the bugs kind of always seem to work out in the favor of the players, but things get tense when the bugs bust through a wall and start tearing through your enemies. But chances are, due to the redundancy of your team, you'll have some medics nearby to revive you pretty quick. Hive mode is simply built different. Your party is limited to four players total, and each person has to be on point to make it through. Each run features a randomized cave layout with multiple large hive areas connected by tight tunnels. Navigating the cave system is straightforward thanks to the TAC map, but actually getting through it alive is a tremendous effort. Every few hundred meters you'll have to deal with a swarm before moving on. There's simply no speed running past the bugs to destroy the hives. They run faster than you and will spawn on by the dozens in every possible direction. The only way forward is teamwork and tactics. Some of the bug waves have triggers, like reaching a certain point on the map. The more you play, the more you'll get familiar with the spawn points and how to set up your team to survive. And while the tunnels are mostly linear, there's some branching paths that you can take to get additional gadgets like proximity mines and rocket launchers. But since you have only a 15 minute time limit, it's smarter to just stay on the main path most of the time. The entrances to the hive caverns offer an ammo station to restock and act kind of like a choke point to funnel bugs away from the hive. A good strategy here is for the bastion heavy infantry class to drop their shield wall at the entrance of the cavern and just use it as bait to pull the bugs away from the hive. I also found the gas grenades to be really effective since they have a long AoE duration. Now once you reach a hive, be prepared for a non-stop onslaught of bugs because they don't stop spawning until the hive in the cavern are destroyed. Some caverns only have one, some have Three. So the faster you can destroy them, the better your chances of survival. Fortunately though, you have a couple of options for doing that. The good old fashioned way with your run of the mill tactical nuke or pummeling the hive with gunfire. And after clearing out all the hives, a dropship will land with a time limit to exfil. And as long as one member of your party makes it out alive, the mission will be a success. My best run so far was me dying with 30 seconds left to exfil and the sole surviving member of my party actually making it out. It might not sound like much, but once you play this mode, you'll understand just how challenging it can be. Now, somewhat annoyingly, you do actually have to hit rank 10 before you can actually access this mode. This isn't a huge ask since it can take between three and four hours of gameplay to reach rank 10 if you actually focus on maximizing your XP, but it could be a bit frustrating if you buy the game expecting to be able to play hive mode with your friends right from the start. Luckily though, the rank is based on your global rank and not the rank of your individual classes. Now, personally, I'd expect to see a few more balanced tweaks to hive mode in the future. It is crazy 
crazy difficult to get through it, even on the easiest difficulty if your teammates don't know what they're doing. With enough practice though, I could see even veteran difficulty being manageable for most well-coordinated teams, but teamwork is going to be the central element here. If your medic pops their revive ability at the wrong time, well, you could end up getting wiped out in a matter of seconds. Plus, knowing when to pause and when to lock down an area to deal with bugs versus sprinting past them to make up ground requires learning the spawn points and triggers over several matches at the very least. Basically, even if you're a veteran in the base game modes, the tips and tricks you learn from playing them won't necessarily directly translate to this one. Now, as for what the rest of the update offers, there's two new weapons to unlock, the Merida XXX Sniper Rifle and the TW2 Special Light Infantry Tactical Shotgun, aka the Split. The Sniper Rifle is a heavy-hitting hunter weapon, and the split comes in three variants, standard pump action buckshot, pump action slug, and full auto slug, available for all the classes. Now, the overall quality of life updates are solid here. The new XP system especially is quite nice as it lets you know how much XP you're earning in real time. The devs have also tweaked the existing XP earning events and added new ones to just generally smooth things out. And they included tables to show the new XP sources and their values. Just knowing how much XP I'm earning when I do something has really helped me out to sort of optimize how quickly I gain that XP. Every class also gets multiple new perks that do things like improve your climbing speed, automatically scanning bugs when they're pinged, being able to revive teammates at distances, increasing your repair range, and so on and so forth. All of them seem like really solid additions that round out the gameplay and class systems. There's also some new buildable utilities like the sentry turret and a shock field device that deploys a circular electric field and shocks the bugs as they come. There is of course more bug fixes and balanced tweaks in the patch notes, but one thing that really caught my eye was that the game is now running on Unreal Engine 5. It launched on Unreal Engine 4, and this upgrade came fairly quickly. Now, unfortunately, the UE5 update doesn't include things like Nanite or Lumen, but the devs are considering adding pretty much all of the engine's new updated features down the road. Now, as excited as I am to see Unreal Engine 5 upgrades hitting this engine, I do wonder just whether or not Star Starship Troopers Extermination has a long enough shelf life. Looking at the Steam Charts data, it's clear that the game simply isn't retaining players for a long period of time. It's averaging around 550 concurrent players per day, which isn't bad for an indie title like this, but it's also not amazing. Luckily, it hasn't affected my ability to find matches, and I think that's very much core to the whole experience. The DLC drops do cause a spike in the player counts though, which is nice, but the average concurrent players drop down to normal numbers soon after. After. Ultimately, I think Extermination is a fantastic foundation for an incredible co-op shooter that might need a bit more content and more things to do if it's to hit a bigger level of success. That said, I'm still very much excited to keep playing this tribute game. I'm a big fan of the movie and this is basically the closest thing you can get to experiencing the movie in a game. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like, maybe subscribe, and maybe even hit that bell icon to beat that YouTube algorithm with me. And next up, check out my first look Look at Pyro, the Mad Max-like star system in Star Citizen's new update. It's pretty fantastic. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.